So uh, my name is Bernice and this is BI Media CT and the program is You with Bernice. So today uh, we are going to talk about robotics in Ghana and in Ghanaian universities, how it's going, how we see the future and any other thing. So you tell my audience your name and we take it from there. Okay, so I'm also Frederick Kwame Minta, um, a student of University of Mines. Oh, okay. So today you are presenting a next few months. Uh, it's a robotic yes, club. So when we say a next, what is a next? Yeah. I see a lot of A's in the a next. What does it mean? <laughs> okay. So a next actually is is a community, and the name itself. Um, I cannot actually break it down, but. Okay. It's from somewhere, just like how we know Google Two is from somewhere. Yes, yeah, so Enix Two is from somewhere, okay. and it's um, generally um, the name of the community, the name of the community, robotics community. So, was there anything that inspired the name? Yes. Yeah, so, the first, the first um, four letters of the name is actually um, the initials of the founder's name. And the next day, it's just like electronics. So okay. just like electronics. Okay. Yeah, just like electronics. I see, I see. Okay, so um, how many members do you have in Ines as at now? Okay, so with the Ines community, okay. we have membership of more than 400, 400 members in the community. Okay. Yeah, for the community itself, we have 400. But for Enix you math for instance we have over 200 membership oh, okay so the community is it like you have uh the communities in schools let's say uh, you must take you know okay okay so the community is um it's a platform for um innovators inventors People are interested in learning things about electronics, robotics, and other things. So it's generally open to everybody. It's not only limited to um, UMAT or KNUST, but it's for everybody at all. So we have multiple people, some in the industry, some students, some who are even in the GHS and the basic schools who are also part of the community. So the community actually is open to every innovator, inventor, and yes, people who are interested in learning new things. So that's what the community actually comprises of. Okay. So if someone joins a next right now, what should the person expect? Okay. So Enix, if you want to join Enix, the community actually is open for you. You can be added to the community, but within the community, we have stages. You get within the community, we have stages. You can register being part of the community again. You can register to be a member of the Enix enix itself that the enix which is the club itself be it wherever that you are let's say if you're in KNUSD, you can be a member of the enix KNUSD, enix UMAT, wherever that you are but for the community itself anybody at all can join and that's where we share most of the tech and interesting things about emerging technologies okay okay that's cool so um when i see a next i see a lot of electrical engineers i see a lot of computer engineers and computer scientists let's say can someone who is doing petroleum engineering environmental and safety let's say someone who has no idea about electronics has no idea about computer or something can the person join yes so for example in next you might slide this it's not only limited to the faculty of engineer is um, open to everybody. We inside the Enix UMAT, we have mining students, we have petroleum, we even have the pre-engineering students, some on board. So it's not only limited to those in the engineering. We even have some people who are not um, offering some of the engineering programs. We have some people from other places doing um, political science who are interested and they are being added to the Enix itself. So. It's not only limited to the engineering, those doing the electrical, computer, and other things, but it's open to everybody. Okay. So if someone is watching us right now and the person is like, I am interested in this thing, but I have no um, 
idea about whatever is going on, but I want to join. What is the guarantee that the person is going to be taught for the person to understand? How do you do it? Okay, so in NX, we have four stages. We have the beginner stage. At the beginner stage, we take you through the basic electronics. Oh. So we take you through the basic electronics. That's, we take you through some of the fundamentals of electronics. We teach you how to do some basic stuff. Then from the basic electronics, we take you to the programming. So the programming, all these things are general. Before you become actual member of the NX, NX we take you to this, uh, these stages. You become, you go to the basic electronics class where we train you to explain to you some of the fundamentals. From there, we take you to the programming. And at the programming field, we explain most of the fundamentals of the programming in different languages for you to choose the one that you are interested in. Oh. So from there, we take you again to the microcontroller class. So the microcontroller class, at the microcontroller class, everybody there is a programmer. So over there, everybody is programming. And that's where you get to work with sensors and other things. So when you pass that stage, then we take you to the internet of things that are the IoT and the artificial intelligence. Over there, to that's where you specialize in the one that you are interested in. So basically, anybody at all, you have to go through these four stages before you can become a pro at Enix. Okay. So before you join Enix, is there any material thing you need, let's say money, do you have to pay any money to join? And uh, do you have to get other stuff for yourself? Okay, so for NX is free. NX, the tutors, the we everything we do is free over there. But to become actual member of the community, you have to um you visit our website. That's the NX um website. When you visit there, you register for membership. That we have sister cities uh for six months. You get access to some of the uh, um, materials, our uh, core materials, and over there you can get one-on-one -on -one tutorials with a, a tutor over there. So you pay 60 CDs for six months. And if you want to have the, we have the um, 120 Ghana CD for a whole year. So that one, at the comfort of your home, you get one-on-one -on -one tutorials with a tutor. And there are more projects which have been done that you can just get access to those projects. So that's how the membership, how to register to be a member of NX. That's the procedure you go to. Visit our website, you register over there. Then we get to a code and it's that code that you use to access most of our tutorials. Okay. So I see you training little children. How is that possible? Because at the university, even like people who are old like us, we don't even see what is going on. We can't even see top. <laughs> How do you do it? How do they grab those things? Okay. So if you have seen more um, NXU UMAT. We take the robotics and the electronics as a, a sport. So okay. when we go to these basic schools, we it just like a cartoons that they watch. They get to see a whole lot of interesting things on the TV, and we try to bring it down for them to understand. So just the normal procedure, the electronics, we tell them, we show them how to how the bulb itself, the bulb that we have in our various rooms, how they're able to turn on and off. And we use that as a play. We use that as a game. We engage them with that. And we also take them through the uh, programming. So we actually break it down to the simplest level. We take it as a game that we are playing with them. And they get to follow up with that. And they really enjoy that aspect very well. Because uh, <laughs> I used to wonder how these kids are being able to grab whatever you guys are teaching them. Because frankly speaking, it's not easy. It's not at the ground. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so right now let's talk about um, robotics in Ghana. How do you see robotics in Ghana as at now in 2023? How do you see robotics in Ghana? Okay, so robotics in Ghana, um, currently I can see um, improvement in robotics in Ghana okay. because if you um, study the trend, you see there are most organizations now coming up and taking up this taking um starting from the basic schools if you observe clearly in accra and other kumasi and things you could see that this robotics has now become the talk of the day when on the media now kids are they're encouraging the kids to go into this field so i can see ghana currently we are trying to focus more on that aspect 
because most of the basic schools and other things, um, organizations are coming up, and just like NXU Mat, we are coming up and also trying to bring more people the awareness that this is an um, interesting for them where the world is going to. Uh, we need people to be critical thinkers and problem solvers. So as a stance, I think Ghana, there has been an improvement um, as compared to the past years. Okay. I am very interested in technology. So sometimes I just listen to people's views on technology. And I hear a lot of people complaining that we see people trying every day to invent something, bring something on board, but they don't see what they are doing, or like what is going to help the nation in general. So I want you to take it from this perspective. Any at some of the projects that you've done, you tell me and you tell me what that's let's say that um, invention or innovation the problem it is solving in the society because that's the only thing that a lot of people stand on whenever they they want to condemn technology in ghana so i want to hear you what are some of the innovations in this you've embarked on okay so um just like as we are saying in in this i think was well, the last three months ago, a team from Enex they decided to work on um, a wheelchair for the physically challenged. And this wheelchair, um, you don't have to touch, you don't have to. You see, most of the time when you go to the hospitals, for example, then those who are physically challenged, they have to force and move their own wheelchair. And sometimes the nurses will have to be moving them. But these guys came up with this chair that you just use voice command. You speak to the chair and if, let's say, a nurse is in this particular room and want to just allow you into the room, they just the nurse can just control the wheelchair to come to you and also nurses having to be pushing them around. So they, come, uh, they came up with this wheelchair, which could be controlled by just voice and also just by moving a joystick on it. And I think it was presented at uh, the UMAT Innovation and Career Fair which they turn out to be the winners. And not only that, there were um, other teams that came up with um, some innovative projects. And even as it stands currently, the community itself is coming up with um, a humanoid robot to help persons with disabilities. Right now, the focus of Enix is coming up with inventions or innovation that will help persons with disability. So as it stands now, there are a lot of projects which are going on not only the wheelchair, but um, some sign language translators system whereby the person doing the sign language, if I don't understand sign language, I will be able to understand or know whatever that the person is saying or trying to uh, communicate to me. And a team also came up with the smart energy meter, which was presented at uh, uh, to ECG, ECG, the one at TAPA, for them to analyze the system and they saw that it was a very innovative project and they gave some input, which the team is still working on it. And not only that, there are a whole lot of projects coming up, which very soon you'll be hearing it in Ghana, solving problems and other things. So um, as people are complaining that the inventions and innovations that you are doing in Ghana, we are not gearing it towards the development of the country, there is another group that is also shifting the blame to the government, saying the government is not giving the inventors and innovators the necessary recognition and support they need to do their work. What do you have to say about this? With the government aspect, I would say, um, yes, government is trying some way, um, but I don't know, maybe... With some of the things I'm seeing, I could see the government organizing STEM innovations for the senior high school uh, students just to see some of the projects they can bring up so that they can try to help them in some way. There are some also programs which are being organized by the government to see um, to that welcomes all innovators and inventors so that they present their projects and they can help them with some kind of support so that they get it on the market so both are helping but as it stands now um 
some they are still in progress so they are all helping in some way yes <laughs> that's how i can put it <laughs> okay so um let's talk about a recent thing i heard some people are saying that instead of we are talking about national science and math schools right now so people are trying to say that instead of the students going to sit there rack their brains show us that they can work faster and stuff next set 10 seconds why is the pyramid of energy yes noble the pyramid of energy is always upright this is because as you proceed from one traffic level to another the energy available for successive traffic level decreases and so the pyramid is always upright yes we should they should gear it towards um Let's say they'll bring a problem in Ghana right now. They are pursuing with that spillage, for instance. Then they'll bring the topic. Uh -huh, they should find solutions to it. But I feel like they have a session for that also within the season. But do you think what they are saying is a good idea? Or you feel like what they are doing currently is also helping? Okay, so with what I have to say concerning that is, um, it would be good if they give more attention or more attention is given to the uh, science fair. That's the one that they do, the science fair. I think they do that one before the science and math, where all the schools, the senior high schools, they give them a problem and they try to come up with a solution by creating or building up something. But we hardly hear of that aspect. But that one should be, I think that one should be much of focus because um, if you notice with the science and mass that is going on current, it's good in some way, but some way to, it's doing us more harm. Because um, I'll use myself as an example. Back in secondary school, my dream was just to have the opportunity to be on stage. And every day I was spending my time just cheering cheering so that i can just pour and the mm. teachers would just see that oh this guy is good so that i represent but i found i think coming to the university i found out that no that one wasn't what it meant for me so i think it would be best if the idea or the attention is geared more towards the uh, science fair which is building the student making them um problem solvers and critical thinkers yeah um two and four or the Calculation they are doing on stage, I think as a nation, we should have passed that level. We might understand, we should have passed that level. Even though it's good, it's good because we base every practical on the theoretical aspect. But we have wasted more time on that since they started. We have been doing that for a long time. They have started a science fair, but the attention, I believe, should be focused more on the science fair so that the students, we will not be like, I want to chew so that the teachers will know that I'm good. But we will be looking at the portion where, but whatever I'm learning in class, I'll be able to what, utilize that knowledge to solve problems and be able to what, better up my own nation. So I believe the attention should be drawn much more to the science fair as compared to the science and math, which we are all cheering and pouring to just have the bragging rights. Okay. So back to Enix. I've seen Enix with some awards. Tell us about those awards. Okay, so um, actually, let me start with the hack. Um, that's Disability Inclusive Hackathon. That's organized yearly by uh, Inclusive Tech Group with Google and yes, with Google and other companies for people to come up with innovative solutions to help persons with disability. And I think they started. Is it? 2001 yeah they started in 2001 and since then enix has been whenever that we go we we are either first or second first was i think last year we sent level hundreds and the level hundreds were first and the second the second team to us from enix it's a national competition so people from all over the place come out and they three days they work on that and always enix has been winning not only that we have also had the privilege of participating in 
um, other competitions, like if you this global competition that took place, is it the robotics that you might was part? I think Enix members yeah, were also yeah, part. Robotics. Yes, Enix Twitter was also part. It was part of the um the people, the innovators on board, and also other competition like Delta Innovation Challenge, like this. Yes, Enix members were also there, and the first second Enix members were part. And other competition as usual, the UMAT Innovation Fair. Since I came to UMAT, I think two years or three years ago, always from first to fifth, it has always been you, uh, Enix, Enix taking it. And whenever we go for competition, I think recently there was this competition that they organized, Ghana Robotics Challenge. And we had some of the level hundreds from Enix, UMAT. They wanted to participate, so they reached out then. They told us that they were going, even though we didn't, because they have been members, we assumed that oh, they, will, they can at least go and put up something, but we didn't expect a win from them. But they went and they, in their category, they were the winners for that category. So for Enix UMAT, one thing we can brag about is whenever we go for competition, because of the training that we give our members, they are always first or second, always the first or with the first, yeah. Okay, so bringing UMAT into the picture, uh, please, those who don't know UMAT, UMAT is University of Mines and Technology located in Ghana in Takwa. Sure. So bringing UMAT into the picture, what has Enix done for UMAT and what has UMAT also done for Enix? Okay, that's a very interesting question. So for Enix, if you are most of Enix, Enix actually the founder graduated last year and he was from UMAT, UMAT, Electrical and Electronics Engineering. And he trained us when um, we were in level 100, when we came out first, he trained us. And when he trained us, he gave us the mandate that it is vision and aim that always Enix um, UMAT students, UMAT engineers will be trained in that aspect so that they can go out there and also train more people. So in Enix, our focus has always been training the UMAT student, you know, in UMAT is it's, it's not a playground. The <laughs> academic work is very serious. So we, the student, is our work, or Enix UMAT is our work that, aside the theoretical aspect which is being tackled in the classroom, when we are done, we take our colleagues through the practical aspect. So always, there's every Friday evening from 4.30 to 7.30, there's always practical. We try to bring that theory that we learn in class, we bring it to the practical world, we show them whatever that is being done. And also with UMAT helping Enix, I think, um, <laughs> yes, UMAT too has helped Enix in many ways because they have given us the platform to showcase some of the things that we can do, like the innovation and career fair like this. Like the incubation, UMAT incubation hub has also given us the opportunity, they share most of, some of the opportunities that they get to ask the Enix members to go out there to exhibit some of the inventions and innovations that we have in collaboration with a uh, Ghana Institute of Engineers, the UMAT chapter. They help Enix in training the members of the uh, student community. Okay. So if there is something, we are bringing the interview to an end. So if there is something that you would say about all that you said today, what would that thing be? Uh, okay. I will say um, where the world has gotten to now, nobody's interested, nobody is so much interested in the certificate we are um, a student or our, yes, a student we are fighting for daily. We are not so much interested in it, but they are interested in what we can do. So my advice or what I have to say to the uh, general public or somebody interested in tech is you have to put in all your effort at um, the national service coming up. There are some people who are looking for places to do it. But this time like this, there are other companies also looking for people who are good in this tech field. There are more companies from U.S. who are, they are always selling their employment details. They want people to come and work there. So if you want to utilize this one year or if you want to do something better i think you should start now by venturing more into the 
tech field, be it robotics, artificial intelligence, internet of things, better yourself. Uh, don't take it, I'm doing political science, I'm doing medicine, I'm doing pharmacy. No, it's for everybody. It, um, technology is with us. Artificial intelligence is now with us. So whatever field that you find yourself in, try to learn it, move into that field, because it's going to get to a time nobody will be interested in calling for a secretary or somebody to come and do the talkings or whatever. There will be machines, robots, and other things doing those things to help us. So if you want to move with the world, then you have to join the tech field so that we all can work and move in that field. Okay, so and that's what I can say, yeah. Oh, okay. So lastly, what do you tell prospective students and even to the continuing students who want to be part of you guys, who want to be part of AMIS, whether in tech or in UMass? Okay, so um, I would look at, um, I would just tell them that be it, whatever institution, I will not limit it to only UMass because okay. we are extending ourselves to KNUSD, UCC, and other places. Okay. So I will just have it out there that try to connect with such a community like Enix, a community that we are trying to build the engineers and problem solvers, critical thinkers, try to connect with us. Don't be shy. All that is needed from you is commitment, dedication, and discipline. When you have these three things, you can be able to move in this field. And Enix is always open for everybody. Just be committed, just be disciplined, and just be dedicated to whatever that you want to achieve. And Enix is there to help you. No matter the institution you are in, be it KNUST, UMAT, TTU, just come together, connect with Enix UMAT, then we'll all work together, learn together, and build better place for ourselves in Ghana here. Okay. So if someone wants to contact a next, can you give, let's say, an email or something that people can contact you? Um, okay. So if you just want to get in contact with Enix, you can you, you can follow us on Twitter, Enix UMAT, on Twitter, on LinkedIn to Enix UMAT. And you can also visit our website. That's www.enix dot com that nx dot com and you can also take our contact which is zero five four three eight four five nine seven zero you just dm you'll be added to the nx community and you can pick it up from there okay perfect thank you very much for coming here today to talk to us about robotics in ghana and in ghana universities we are much grateful to you for coming Thank you and see you once again some other time. Thank you Bye. Very much. Bye. Thank you very much, Sue. Yeah, welcome.